it's Stacey with Chapter Chicks, and we are back from our two-week break. Thank you guys so much for being patient and giving us the time off that we needed. To get right back into it, right back into review, I'm going to start off with City of Fallen Angels by Cassandra Clare. A lot of you guys requested that I do a whole series review, and I will do that, but I'm kind of hope I'm kind of wanting to wait until all the books come out, so I only have to do one series review when it's all over. I hope that's okay with you guys. By the way, in this review, you can watch the beginning part of it if you have not read this. This book review was requested by Olivia over at XXX Dancer Girl XX. She has her own channel, and I will be putting a link to it in the down bar. She does like montages of the books that she has read. I'm so glad that she requested this review for me, just because I was waiting for an excuse to read this. Because because I was like kind of like saving it because you know I love this series so much. Let me explain a little bit about me. Just a little bit about me. When I'm reading a series, the first book in the series, I usually judge very very lightly because there's a lot of setup going on. You're getting to know all these characters, you're getting to know their predicament, the concept, and there's a lot of setup going on. So sometimes through all that setup, the book doesn't really get that amazing factor in it. The second and third books in the series, I usually um, are kind of lightly judged on. You know, I feel like the hook should be in. I feel like the concept and this, the story should be really going at this point. Towards the end of a series, I judge very harshly just simply because I feel like everything has been set up. Everything, all the characters are established and I feel like that this is the point in the series where it really needs to be on top of its game and if it's not I don't really allow any room for error in the end of the series because I feel like there shouldn't be any excuse. I know that's a lot of explanation it's just because it, you'll find out okay. I loved this book it was so good it was so amazing but I was really disappointed with it when I started reading it. Like everyone knows, the series was going to stop after City of Glass, but they were so popular that they wanted her to extend the series. Like I said in the haul, I was really afraid that a lot of these books, these newer books in the series, would feel forced and that it would feel like it was just ruining the series because it was just like add-ons. Like, I was really, really skeptical of it and I was really scared of it. And when I first started reading it, all my fears were like being realized because First of all, you're in Simon's world a lot more in this one. You know, you're usually in Clary's world for the most, the majority of the book, but a lot of the times you're in Simon's head for this one, which I thought was weird and I thought was a different kind of twist. And I was like, at first I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I like this. I feel like in the beginning of this one, there was a lot of setup going on. It's something that should not be happening this far into the series. And I was like really disappointed with it when I was first reading it. It kind of like ended in City of Glass. There was a couple little loose ends that weren't tied up and I thought that that's what the series was going to do was start tying up some of those loose ends. She was rebooting the story which I feel like shouldn't happen this far into the series but in the back of my head I know that that's what she had to do because she had to extend the series. But with everything that she had going on with having to reboot the series and rebring it up I think she did an amazing job at it. I don't think very many authors could have pulled it off the way that she did. I haven't read it Please do not get too focused on the beginning because the, to me the beginning is a little boring and a little uh, disappointing, especially with the high pace that the Moral Instruments is usually at. But it does make up for it. It leaves on such a cliffhanger that I just, I cannot wait for the next one. I was like, oh my gosh, when it happened, I was like screaming like, no, it cannot be over. I have to have the next one. Cannot wait for the next one. And I feel like that your love for the characters kind of gets you through that rough beginning a little bit so even if it wasn't for the amazing ending I still think the book would have been very good just because your love of the characters as far as couples go in this part of the story I am super happy with all the couple couples that she has set up I think everybody's matched up with who everybody should be matched up with I love every single one of them I love the dynamic of each relationship and how it's different from all the other ones so if you're not really a Jason Clary fan you can kind of get your couple fix from the other couples in the story because they're all different and they're all on different levels now for the spoiler section I'm just really gonna talk about my feelings on the ending and some of the character relationships first of all I love how you know there's a lot of things in the beginning that was just kind of rough for me but I love of how Simon is kind of like a player in the beginning. I'm like, yeah, go Simon. He had his heart broken by Clary. He just kind of goes off on a little 
like off of his uh, sweet characteristic nature and I love that I love how he's finally thinking of himself as number one for once and I know it sucks that he's like dating two girls at the same time but I feel like Simon after everything he's been through deserves to be a little bit of a bad boy and I really like that in the beginning of this I'm so happy that Simon and Isabel are the ones that are kind of forming the bond because I think they are adorable couple I think they are perfect for each other I think that her like uh, distance and her you know life of fighting is perfect for si Simon gamer layback personality I think they're so cute together talk about the ending oh my gosh oh my gosh oh my gosh <laughs> we find out that Sebastian is coming back and he does kind of he's possessed Jace a little bit or he's possessed Jace and you also find out that um, they're now bonded. Like, to kill one, you have to kill the other. And it's like, oh my gosh, what is going to happen? I could not believe the ending of this story. I'm like, oh my gosh, I couldn't have got it any better. And it was such a cliffhanger. I loved it. Kudos to Cassandra Clare. She did an amazing job. If you're still watching this and you should have read it, let me know your guys' uh, opinions in the comments. Let me know if you liked it, if you liked the characters, if you liked the ending, predictions, anything like that because I love this series and I would love to discuss it with you guys. Um, so thank you again, Olivia, for requesting this book to me because I absolutely loved it. And I hope you guys all enjoyed it as much as I did. This is Stacy with Chapter Chicks and this chapter was for you.